Hey everybody, so it's Winnie from Steak Sito, and today we are going to be diving into an innovative concept in blockchain governance that is essentially aiming to address critical challenges based by proof of stake networks. Yes, I'm talking about none other than bear chains proof of liquidity. So yeah, let's break it down clearly and simply because up until a few minutes ago myself i didn't understand proof of liquidity so my goal with this video is to help any of you who've been hearing the term but don't really understand what in the world that even means um to have a better understanding of bearer chain Proof of liquidity is a new consensus mechanism with a focus on two primary goals. The first one being to build systematic liquidity and the second one being aligning stakeholder incentives. This system uses three unique tokens to achieve these goals. First, we have Bera, and Bera is used for gas fees and network security. Then we have BGT. BGT is used for governance and managing chain incentives. And finally, we have Honey. Honey is a stable coin on Bera chain that is aimed at supporting the overall ecosystem dynamics. So, to fully understand proof of liquidity, it is very useful to first examine proof of stake. In proof of stake, holders stake their tokens as collateral. This staking allows them to propose new blocks and earn rewards. A level above proof of stake is delegated proof of stake or DPoS, which essentially enables participants to delegate their voting power to validators. However, proof of stake has several significant drawbacks. First, Staking tokens reduces available liquidity because these tokens are locked up by validators, making them inaccessible for other users. Additionally, applications built on proof-of-stake chains have limited means to improve the security of the underlying chain since the security primarily depends on the staked tokens. And finally, validators receive very minimal benefits from the applications that they support. Despite providing essential infrastructure and maintaining the network, they actually don't gain substantial rewards from, you know, the success of the applications of the chains that they support. And this could potentially lead to misalignment of incentives. So, proof of liquidity builds on the foundation of proof of stake, addressing its limitations in what I would call a really interesting way. To be honest, I haven't seen anything like this, and I'm still trying to wrap my head around all the information that I just consumed um, a couple hours before my filming of this video. So, what does proof of liquidity look like? Let's start with validators. New validators must provide a Bera bond. Remember, Bera is a token for securing the network. And so validators need to provide a Bera bond to be eligible for block production. Once they're selected to propose a block, validators direct BGT emissions to liquidity gauges of their choice. This process influences network incentives and creates a dynamic where validators are actively managing and supporting liquidity, unlike in proof of stake, where their role is rather static. Another major advantage of proof of liquidity is its unique approach to decentralizing inflation. So, proof of liquidity basically emits new BGT, remember BGT is the governance token, to liquidity providers, avoiding the stake centralization that we commonly see with traditional proof of stake networks. This approach ensures that new tokens go to active users who contribute to the network by providing liquidity and performing other common on-chain actions. Something else worth noting is that with proof of liquidity, all validators have an equal chance of producing blocks. 
However, the amount of BGT emitted per block is proportional to the BGT delegated to the proposing validator. Yeah, and so this basically democratizes block production and encourages validators to align their interests with those of the community and the applications being built on Barachain. A key innovation of proof of liquidity is the separation of concerns between governance and security. BGT is non-transferable and earned only by providing liquidity. It is then used to influence chain incentives and governance decisions. On the other hand, Bera is obtained by burning BGT in a one-way process and is used for securing the network and paying gas fees. This separation ensures that those who influence chain activities by way of BGT are distinct from those responsible for chain security by way of the Bera token, thus enhancing the ecosystem's overall effectiveness. And so I guess what Barachain is aiming to do is to prevent a conflict of interest and ensure that governance and security are clear and non-overlapping, unlike in proof of stake where they are often conflated. Another very big difference between proof of liquidity and proof of stake is that in traditional proof of stake systems, validators often have little incentive to engage with other ecosystem players such as the protocols and the end users and this lack of interaction can lead to a fragmented ecosystem where validators, protocols and users operate in silos, reducing overall network efficiency and collaboration. So what does proof of liquidity do? Proof of liquidity addresses this issue by involving all participants in the ecosystem. Validators, protocols, and users must work together to maximize liquidity and benefits. So basically, active validators direct BGT rewards to the most profitable liquidity pools, which are often linked to specific protocols. This then creates a direct incentive for validators to support the protocols and users that contribute to the network's liquidity. So basically, proof of liquidity ensures that validators are not just passive recipients of block rewards, but active contributors to the network's growth and health. So let's take a final look at all the ecosystem participants in Verichain. First, we have the validators. They play a crucial role in reaching consensus on the chain state, and they earn Bera through various mechanisms, including gas fees, priority fees, and incentives for directing BGT rewards to specific liquidity pools known as gauges. Next, we have BGT holders and farmers. These people have a very significant role in influencing governance and directing Barachain's economic incentives by delegating their tokens to validators. This delegation helps to determine which validators will propose blocks and how the BGT rewards are going to be distributed. BGT farmers do so by providing liquidity to profitable liquidity gauges. So yeah, and then these farmers can then delegate their BGT to validators who either direct rewards to their preferred gauges or maximize overall incentive earnings. So yeah, in a nutshell, proof of liquidity ensures that liquidity providers are directly rewarded for their contributions to the ecosystem, fostering a more engaged and motivated community. Next, we have the Bera Foundation. The Bera Foundation operates the native dApps on Bera Chain that provide essential services for the ecosystem. First, there's BEX. BEX is basically Bera Chain's decentralized exchange, which facilitates the swapping of various tokens on Bera Chain. Next, we have Bend. So basically, they just add a B in front of everything. Bend, lend. So Bend is the native borrowing and lending protocol, and Bend allows users to lend and borrow assets securely. Finally, you've got Burps. Burps 
is Verachain's native perp sticks, and it basically enables the trading of perpetual contracts, which are essentially a type of derivative in the DeFi space. So yeah, these dApps operated by the Bear Foundation generate fees that are distributed to BGT holders, creating demand for BGT. And yeah, the liquidity provided in these dApps serve as default gauges for earning BGT, ensuring a consistent and reliable source of rewards. Finally, we've got Barachain's ecosystem projects, of which there's a crap ton. Like, there's so many of them. I am so overwhelmed trying to get a hang of this ecosystem because it's quite expansive. So yeah. Projects on Barachain can incentivize validators like Stakesito to direct BGT rewards to their liquidity gauges, not only promoting liquidity within the projects, but also integrating them more deeply within the Barachain ecosystem. So yeah, by aligning incentives through BGT, all participants, validators, projects, users work towards a common goal, increasing the network's overall value. Validators like us are going to be motivated to support projects that generate high liquidity. Projects, on the other hand, gain more active participation and liquidity. And when it comes to users, users benefit from the enhanced network services and rewards. So yeah, TLDR of proof of liquidity on Barachain is that it offers a more equitable distribution of incentives and improves the alignment among network participants. For more details on this, I'm going to share a link to a blog post that Kami published, uh, I think last week, and she kind of covers proof of liquidity and the history of um, liquidity provision in blockchain networks. So yeah, it's pretty much Verachain. I thought I actually knew what Verachain was until I started to read on this. And then I realized, okay, I actually do not. So I hope this video was helpful. And Stixito is going to be a validator on, you know, Verachain. Our DMs are open. We want to collaborate with as many people in the ecosystem. And yeah, I think our big value add is really just the network that we've built and, you know, the ability to support projects with onboarding users into their protocols and ecosystems. So yeah, that wraps up my video. Have a good rest of your weekend. Bye.